everyone, Joel Lance here. Today we are in Portland, Oregon, outside the famous Sailor's Old Country Kitchen. Yes, Old Country Kitchen. Here to do their famous 72 ounce challenge. Yes, 72 ounce steak challenge. Look, they got big, big, big steaks right there. So I will read you the rules. They have these very nice cards explicitly stating everything here. So you must eat two celery sticks, two carrot sticks, two olives, two slices of dill pickles, one regular size salad, all the lean meats and edible portions so you don't actually have to eat any fat or gristle if you don't want to, 10 french fries or one baked potato, one slice of french bread, and either drink a coffee, glass of milk, or a cup of tea, and all this must be done within 60 minutes after the steak is served to complete the challenge. Um, you have, may have the steak reheated, but you like take away from these 60 minutes, um, and that's about that. And if you do it, you get the meal for free. You also get your picture on the wall of fame, and if not, you pay for it if you fail, obviously. Um, so that's pretty cool, but this is a very well-known challenge. This place in general is well-known. They're known for their big cuts of meat, not only the 72 ounce sirloin steaks, but they have giant like 40 ounce porterhouses and tenderloins and everything. So it's really cool. I'm excited. Again, this is absolutely legendary challenge. Um, so it's getting dark, so I'll head on in. I'll have fun with these food. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't really know what else to say, but Portland, Oregon, it's been cool so far. So uh, let's go in, eat some food, and uh, yeah, rules right here. Official, very official. So that, let's go eat. All right, everyone, so here we are with the steak challenge, guys. So the famous, famous steak challenge. So this challenge has actually been going on for like, since the 1940s, which is insane. Again, there's been thousands of attempts. There's been quite a few winners, quite a few losers, that's for sure, both men and women. So this is an absolutely giant 72 ounce sirloin steak. We have one onion ring, we have the 10 french fries, we have the uh, pickles, celery, carrots, olives, and then I had the uh, salad. Um, Scott actually had an option to go with a soup instead, so he had a soup of the day, which is a clam chowder. And we have our one drink as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Very famous challenge. Glad we are able to be here. Sailors itself is a staple in the Portland area. They just celebrated 75 years um, being here, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, Multi-generational uh, family restaurant. But that's about it. So Scott, ready to get started? Oh yeah. We, uh, we also have some uh, brand new steak knives, so I'm sure they're nice and sharp, but it looks very delicious, guys. Um, so that let's get started here just momentarily. All right, so let us get rocking and rolling. How do we say the count of maybe five, four, whatever you're ready, Three, brother. Two, one. Let's eat. Cheers. I'll probably start with some of these pickles. Yeah. It's actually a very good pickle. Just like, just like, mm -hmm. Still pickles, too. Very good. So I know Scott's not the biggest fan of pickles, but it's a very good pickle. I'm just going to finish this salad as well. Mmm. French fries are nice and coated with the juices from the steak. It's like that. Mm. Nice creamy clam chowder. Crouton's really good. Alright. Let's get into some of this steak. You asked for these cooked medium rare. I have some of their signature Sailor's Six Spice. Very large piece of meat. Never had a steak this big before. There will be lots of cutting. It 
Appreciate that. Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're here at Sailor's Old Country Kitchen in Portland, Oregon. One of the oldest restaurants in Portland, one of the most well-known restaurants in Oregon, and home of one of the oldest food challenges in the world. Yes, we are talking a 70-year lineage uh, heritage of this food challenge, so super, super impressive. So the challenge, as we said, is basically a very large steak. You know, it's actually pretty phenomenal and amazing to think that people, you know, 60, 70, however many years ago, were doing an interest in food challenges. I don't really think about it, but we're gonna do a lot for chill, man. Mm -hmm. So the challenge itself is a pretty, what I would call traditional or classic steak challenge. A 72 ounce steak, then you have a potato side. You can use again the baked potato or the 10 french fries. We both opted for the 10 french fries. You have a bit of a vegetable, you know, plus a side. I went with a salad, Scott went with a soup. Chris has challenge been here for so many years. Yeah, 70, out of, uh, I think out of 75 years, they've had the challenge for 73 years. That is a, a very old food challenge. Mm -hmm. For the challenge, you are able to have your steak cooked medium rare or rare. There is no other way in which it can be cooked. And even then, it still takes at least a good 40 minute cook time. So I think they care one about quality, but also about kitchen time. I wonder if it could be possibly the oldest food challenge. Honestly, it might be the oldest one I don't know. I'm not sure on the big Texan strategy. Scott and I both went with medium rares, and we were hoping to become winner 700 and 701. And yes, while that does seem like there are a lot of winners, and it actually is a pretty high success rate, this challenge has had over 2,500 attempts. So there has been a very, very large number of individuals try this over the year. And while, let's just put it with that one hour time limit, it does appear that it is quite doable for many individuals. It was just good though. Yeah. All right, there's six pies. I asked everybody on YouTube, as to where I need to go eat. Everybody said to come to Sailor's. Mm -hmm. Very well known. I mean, a reputation will last for 75 plus years. Traditionally, I would put this at an intermediate level challenge due to, you know, approximately five-ish, you know, five, five and a half pounds of food and the one hour time limit. But it being a steak, it does add some difficulty. There is a lot of active chewing. There is a lot of, you know, kind of uh, more timely eating involved. However, with that high of a success rate, you know, I actually am going to kind of put it as a beginner intermediate. And that's just because, well, time has shown that quite a few individuals can actually beat this challenge. In fact, it's, you know, I think upwards of 25 over even maybe over 25%. So pretty crazy that that many people could do it, but nonetheless. It's a fairly large restaurant too. It's huge. I'm busy. Very popular spot. Busy. Yeah. Very, very clear that it's a very popular spot. We're here on a Friday night, right at dinner time, so. The meal does cost $72, um, but I do think that that's a pretty reasonable price tag for what you get. Plus, you get kind of the experience. Like, you get to enjoy one of the oldest food challenges in the world. Not to mention, it is a pretty tasty challenge, and it is in quite a legendary location. You can either get your steak chunks cooked medium, rare, or rare. That's it. Nothing but medium, rare, or rare, so. And what was the medium rare? How do you guys like your steak cooked? Comment down below. Comment down below. Okay, a little bit of stock. The actual flavors itself were good. Um, they cooked it on a flat top, and I was really enjoying their steak spice that they had in house. For those of you wonder what I'm doing, I'm cutting a piece off, and then I'm saving me a little bit of time on some of the cutting into really little bites. I'm kind of using my hands, I'm just kind of ripping it up a little bit. It goes pretty quick. Seems to help a little bit. 
We had a good number of patrons there watching, such as one lady who mentioned she was about 86 years old and had been coming here since she was a child. She also mentioned that um, she had never seen somebody successfully complete this challenge, although she's seen a lot of people try. So she was excited to see if we could actually defeat the challenge. So let me know if you think we could by commenting hashtag win or by commenting hashtag lose down below. So my drink over with a decaf coffee. Scarlet with a tea. Oh, I had two knives going there for a second. A green tea, yes. But I believe that's all the information I have for you at the moment. So that let's tune on in. Maybe I'll talk to you in a little bit and let's see if we can beat this challenge. Very unusual for me to be eating with a knife and a fork on a food challenge, but... I thought I'd give it a try. It is a food challenge which like a knife and a fork makes sense and you kind of need to be honest. At least partially. I'm definitely liking it. That um steak spice they have there. <laughs> it's some really good flavor. <laughs> I have a very salt forward palate anyway. So, mm -hmm. definitely enjoy it. <laughs> Looks like we're about ten and a half minutes in. I think I'm finished about half of my steak. Joel's, Joel's a, yeah, around the same, a little bit more. Um, He's got a few french fries and that onion ring for dessert. I was gonna save it. I don't know what happened. I had to have it. <laughs> There's some very good marbling there. Very savory flavor. Nice and tender. I'm just cooking it brown. Just cook properly. There's some connective tissue. Which is not required. Yeah, it is, it is interesting for a challenge. Like normally they make you eat everything, but some of it's not even edible. So I actually really appreciate them. How you only eat the edible portion, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Food challenge that makes sense, you know? They want you to enjoy your food, yeah. enjoy your experience. <laughs> May not always happen. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Remember to like that video and consider subscribing. Fun fact, they actually never gave us bread for this challenge, even though it said it may be required. Believe it or not, I don't eat a lot of red meat. So this is a beautiful treat. Most of and challenges for me too. Yeah. Well, on challenges, we eat a lot of burgers. <laughs> What's your meat of choice? Mm. I think it really varies. It's like the food, I don't really necessarily have a favorite food. It just depends on that evening, you know, what I'm feeling like. I like me some barbecue ribs when I'm having some red meat. I eat lots of fish. Um, lots of, I have lots of chicken. Yeah. What about you? Um, I eat quite a bit of chicken, I guess. <laughs> I like, uh, I like, I like cows. Cows are my favorite animal. Mm -hmm. The pork's really good as well. Both come to the end of our meat. Now I'm in All right, we'll blend. 
time. I'm really happy to do this challenge. It's a very like famous challenge. Very well known. I tried to do this challenge about almost two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. For the website app. Well, here I am. Worth the wait. Definitely yeah. worth the wait. One thing I really appreciate too is like, you can tell they know how to cook a big piece of meat. Right? Because it's tender all the way through. It's just cooked right. You know, it's not overcooked. It's almost like they've been doing it for 75 years. Definitely. Plus, it's like a regular menu item. Like, you don't just have to do the challenge. And I believe she said it was $72 for the meal, which for 72 ounces. Oh, that was good. It is. Going out. Oh yeah. Connected tissue. Fatten that bite. It was good. Uh, let's go double check. We saw just connective tissue. Eat the fat. Because I don't really care. Alright, there we go. I will say though, very delicious. Very delicious. Scott is right behind me. I had a big pile of beef juice. You know, to be honest, the rest of the steak didn't end. I was really enjoying it. Maybe you should order another one. I mean, I could. One thing is, it does take like a good 40 minutes to cook, though. Can't leave my my guests waiting on me. So let's finish up these fries and the sundry. Very moist fries, but you said very beef juicy. Mm -hmm. Scraps. A little shrapnel. All the shrapnel, everything edible, part of the challenge. That's it right there. And we are done. About 20 minutes. Very delicious. I actually thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. Love their seasoning. Um, the great flavors. That's about it. Like I said, I I would eat this if it wasn't connective tissue, and as I don't have to eat it, I won't. Otherwise, I would eat the inedible portions 100%. Because I have the foreign challenges, so I really appreciate them not doing that. So, yeah, it's kind of about that. Um, so that's just literally finishing up. Right at the end. And that's about that. So let's tune in as he crushes the rest of the show. Yeah, I, I really wish this was actually like meat. I'd love to eat mm -hmm. some more of it. 
And like we saw the, the guy trim it himself. So it's kind of a luck of the draw, like what you get in your cut as far as what's edible and what's not, like if you get any. I do appreciate them trying to actually trim off, like at least some of the fat cap. Or I'm gonna make sure again you're getting an enjoyable steak experience. You're not just getting like, you know, again the essentially inedible portions. Yeah, I think we should do a 144 ounce challenge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. They just gave me the thumbs up, so that was good. Coming on 23 and a half minutes in, Scott is literally just finishing up. Done his last couple bites. How come you didn't get any, like, silver skin? I think I ate it. Did you? <laughs> I guess that's fair. I'm not a well-seasoned vet on the steak by itself. No. Well, again, most other steak challenges, you have to eat all the, all like everything, like including the, sometimes even just like create, whether it be crazy fat, gristle, um, connective tissue, like silver skin. But I mean, if they don't want me to eat it, I won't argue. I guess it's kind of the way to put it. Scott just finishing up here. Just finishing his washing his last bites down with his tea. Nice. Woo! Literally like just shy of 25 minutes, couple seconds shy. Dude, good job. You too. That was your first steak challenge. That was right? my first steak challenge. What'd so. you think? No, it was really good, actually. I wasn't sure uh, you know how that would feel to have that much meat, but I feel great. It's good. Yeah. Right? So people often ask a funny question, it's like, how do you feel after a challenge? Well, to be honest, after something like this, I feel way better than eating something like pancakes or like something like really, really, really carb laden. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I feel much better. I, I, I really enjoy it, honestly. Um, the this, this seasoning is great. They're old country kitchen steak spice. Um, in all reality, if I do my ear connective tissue, I would eat mine as well, but yeah, whatever. good for next time. <laughs> um, but that's about it, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Really glad uh, and thankful to everybody in Portland for recommending this place. Thank you to Sailors for having us out. Thank you for offering this challenge for 70 some years. I think that's super, super cool. It's really neat to hear about the history of this place. Again, it's been around for like 75 years, 75 plus years. Um, you know, and they have known for their steaks. They're known for their vast variety of other items on the menu. They have chicken bread steaks. They have a variety of like chowders, and, and really everything. It's a very cool restaurant. Lots of banquets and stuff also happening here all the time. Um, like I said, staple in Portland. So with that, everybody, oh, we do have our t-shirts. Cool. Okay. There we so go. Scott, hopefully it's clean hands. Yeah, I'm little, good. I'm good. My little lower. Clean-ish. But we'll, uh, let's show you these shirts. We'll open them on up. And this is what the t-shirt looks like. It says I ate the whole thing, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's about that, guys. Like I said, really cool. Glad we're going to do this. Um, of course, the next time, say happy, hungry, happy eating. Any words, Scott? Come to Portland, have some steak. Yeah, really cool spot. Like I said, huge thank you to staff. So, with that, until next time, to have out the hungry, happy eating. And we do get these $72 meals for free, obviously, t shirts, and maybe a wall of fame, or at least our like number, our number goes up on the wall. I think that's kind of what it is. The big, great big sign at the front. Um, so, I think we'd be like winner, maybe 700, 701, something like that. Lots of winners, but name thousands of attempts. So, until next time, everybody, at that, just have a lovely day. Hey everyone, good morning, Joel Hansen here. We are in Portland, Oregon, downtown Portland. Um, this is the Japanese American Memorial that we're at right now. Uh, basically right downtown, Chinatown's this way, Old City is that way, all this stuff. Uh, Portland is in a very interesting 
in the terms of the lady at our hotel transitional uh, period right now. So I just wanted to show you guys some clips a little bit where we can. We have a little bit of time. Um, I will say though, in this on this you know December day, it is very gorgeous down here. It is sunny. Um, the weather is brisk and crisp. And then we have these uh, big rocks as part of the memorial. We have this waterfront up here, which is very, very beautiful, I will say. Portland also has a surprising amount of uh, complex roadways and or bridges. So here we have like, you know, some kind of a two layer train slash, uh, you know, motor vehicle bridge. We have bridges over here, we have bridges down there, bridges everywhere, I guess you could pretty much say. Um, but as we came down this direction, so as we came south, that's north, just roadways and bridges and complex roadways, that's for sure. So I uh, don't know the population of Portland, but there's definitely lots of cars and lots of needs for complex roadways. But yeah, it's, it's actually very pretty. So downtown Portland. So here we are close to the Trends down. Here's a big sign that says Keep Portland Weird. It's on the outside of a cabaret. Um, we've seen a couple gentlemen slash strip clubs around. Here's uh, Voodoo Donuts, I believe. Voodoo Donuts, if I'm not mistaken, it might have originated in Portland. Um, if not, I know a lot of its roots are here in Portland. Uh, and then obviously it's expanded to across America. Um, it's there's some there's some cool like buildings and stuff down here again some of it's a little uh a little rough around the edges a little a little beat up um there's some happenings such as some police and dealing with somebody right now uh but like i said it is a pleasant it's a cool city to walk around um there is like it, it's actually gorgeous it uh the sun and like the weather and everything so there's some more uh, more views down the down the road here, and uh, yeah, we'll continue to walk around a little bit. Definitely, like I said, some pretty some pretty cool slash interesting sights to be seen, and definitely never a dull moment. Uh, you can also tell where some like a block can also be drastically different than another block in a way, whereas it's a little rough around the edges, and then come somewhere else and it's not quite as rough, but maybe we'll go check out Voodoo Donuts, the pink box donuts.